one way that we are updating and keeping web pages current is going through a Google Doc that's embedded into the actual web page. Here you see an example of a clubs page that has all of our clubs listed and their sponsors and more information about the clubs. What we're seeing here is an actual embedded Google Doc that is set to 100% width with in this particular case a 5000 pixel um, height. And to see what this really looks like is that what we have here is a actual template that's all set up. And you can see right here we have a table. And this particular template is set up with specific margins and layout and orientation. Notice when you're doing this that you'll be working from left all the way to the very right. So if you were to print this off, you would be missing a good bit of information on the margins. But we are not printing this off. This is getting embedded exactly into the actual web page the way it is. Another example of how this would look is if we look into the track and field page, you'll see here that we have a web page that has just a lot of information about the startup of track and field. If we scroll down, we'll see a schedule, and all this is is an embedded Google Doc. So what I did is I took over exactly what I typed up to hand out to the students um, for the start of track and field, and I put that into my shared template that's embedded into the page and then all the links, all the hyperlinks came over. So once you understand what you have, it's now time to go ahead and get started embedding it. The typical groups that will be using these are clubs and athletic pages. We are going to do one Google Doc, so we are not going to have multiple sub pages, sub pages, sub pages, but you can embed stuff and put a whole bunch of content, rich text content, into a Google Doc. And once you are ready to get started and you have completed the required work to get going, you're going to have a document shared with you. And that document has already been embedded into your page. It's going to be embedded below the current content if any content was brought over from the old website. And what you're going to need to do is that when you are updating your embedded document, you're going to need to let me know, Levi Seibert know, that you have already started embedding your stuff so I can go back and erase your old HTML that was pulled over from the old website. So the way it's going to work is that it's going to push in the new and you will still see the old. I need to know when to get rid of the old. So, so for example, you have your Google Drive and you'll see something come in that says your club, club name and a template. And the easy practice to do because things get lost very fast and they shared with me is to right click on that template and choose to add to my drive. What happens when you go into your drive is you're going to find that document and you'll see right here that you are not the owner still but you have access to it and it's not going to get lost in the shuffle and you can see exactly who updated it and who's the owner um, and when. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on it and so I want to open up this particular template because it's already going. Things to remember, do not change any of the page setup. So you will see that it's very wide, it's in landscape mode, that's on purpose. Do not change any of the margins, do not change any of the background. So don't change any of the setup that's already in there on the page setup. So the margins and the background and the width of the page and the landscape, all that needs to remain intact. Another thing that I do on mine, and I think it's a great practice for this particular case, is that I go to View, and I make sure I turn off the print layout. Notice there's no checkbox on print layout, so we can see the full view. By default, when we embedded all of these documents into pages already, we made it 2,000 pixels long. It needs to be longer sometimes if you have two pages, actually excuse me, more than two pages. If you have more than two pages, you need to let me know so that we can change your code so that you do not need to scroll and it shows up just like an embedded page. Other than that, you're ready to get going. It must exactly what you put in there is going to show up just like that on the actual web page. One thing I've noticed that if you put pictures and you put them all the way to the right, sometimes that might come off of the actual web page and not show up in this whole, whole entirety. So I recommend if you're putting um, pictures in there to either center them or left align them or put them in the table. Um, I also will tell you that anything you do here will automatically be reflected every five minutes on the school web page. So if you update something here, five minutes later it's going to push over to the web page. So there is no updating needed. You do not need to let me know to update your page. Whatever you put into your document will automatically go into your page. Hyperlinks work as you can see right here. You can click on this and it will show you the actual hyperlink. To hyperlink anything, you can just highlight it, including pictures, and go over to this link area, which would be a very common tool for you to use. 
We are not going to go over all the ins and outs of a Google Doc and how you can modify and manipulate it, but you will see that you can put tables in here and it's a great way to keep things organized. You can also put hyperlinks in there, pictures in there. One thing to realize is that since this is web-based and you can do it anywhere, you can also share this out with co-collaborators. Co you can share this with individuals. And so if you press the share button right here, you can go ahead and put uh, more individuals in there who can actually work with that particular page. So that is something to keep in mind as you're doing this. Remember though, there is no checking after you. Anything you put on here is going to go directly live to your page and you will be shared your document directly with yourself and myself. And so um, that's how it's going to show up. The big keys to remember again, one last time, is that when you're ready to begin on your actual template and you've completed the work necessary to get going with it, you need to let me know so I can send that template to you. It will show up in your shared folder. Take that, right click on it, add to your drive so it does not get lost in the shuffle. Then go ahead and start working with it. Keep the fonts the same. Keep everything kind of real consistent. Bold, italicized, do not change multiple fonts or multiple sizes. Um, keep that to a minimal. Do not change the actual page width, the height. Don't change anything on it. Change it to uh, the view to a uh, not a print layout. And also do not change the background. 